24 hour news 8 at 6 continues here's a question for you should marijuana be legalized and regulated a majority of hoosiers voting in the wish tv ball state hoosier survey say yes yeah and as a number of states move to approve for medicinal use some in central indiana are looking to make the move to those states my teammates Bennett Haberly looks at the debate on if the benefits outweigh the risks of legalization. Oh, me, Marty. Oh, yeah, yeah. Jennifer Perkins is on her kitchen floor. Oh, her husband is recording video of what he says is one of her frequent seizures. I've had seizures since I was three years old. Um, uncontrollable. Her medical records and CAT scans show she has tuberous sclerosis, a condition that's left tiny tumors all over her body. She believes they may be the source of her seizures. I'm on the generic for Xonogram two times a day, three in the morning. She claims the medications she's taking aren't working. I'm 49 years old and I'm getting tired of feeling this way. So Jennifer and her husband turned online, setting up a GoFundMe account, asking the public to give them money to pay for a trip to Oregon in hopes of finding medicinal marijuana, as the money was slow to roll in. The couple's desperation led to a yard sale at their Indianapolis home. We're trying to, <laughs> trying to get it out of here so we can go. Jennifer, a former reserve sheriff's deputy in Johnson County, was willing to sell off her John Deere collectibles, her wedding dress, just about anything to earn money. I used to be a clown. Got my clown dress over there. <laughs> Days after this interview, the couple packed up and left for Oregon. And they're not alone. More and more Hoosiers and people across the country are turning online, not only voicing their support for medical marijuana, but asking for money. What's up, Internet? My name is Chris Thompson. I'm trying to raise $5,000 to fight for marijuana legalization. This Purdue summer. bioengineering student Chris Thompson sought out rent money online for an unpaid internship in Colorado with marijuana activists. I realized kind of halfway through college that I'd rather start a marijuana company in Denver and be in activism rather than like just being in an engineering firm for the rest of my life. Chris helped kickstart the Purdue chapter of Normal, the national organization for the reform of marijuana laws. His efforts for legalization on campus are mirrored in the state capitol by State Senator Karen Talian. I graduated in 1968 from the University of Chicago where if you weren't smoking pot, nobody, well, everybody smoked pot. And those people are not junkies today. Her bill that would have legalized medical marijuana in Indiana died this spring. She says there's more support among her fellow lawmakers than one might think. We just haven't given them an opportunity to vote on it because the gatekeepers say no. You know, there's always should be great concern when you want to legalize another intoxicant or substance that can uh, be more available. David Powell with the Indiana Prosecuting Attorneys Council often lobbies against Italian's efforts. He says what's happening in Colorado should be a lesson. Despite state figures showing legalized marijuana brought in $52 million in tax revenue this year, Powell says other data shows more pets and children are now being exposed to the drug and school suspensions are up. If you look at the data coming out of Colorado, especially on children and pets, uh, it's not good. But just a car ride away from Indianapolis, marijuana will soon be available legally for Illinois residents. Illinois' four-year pilot program with medical marijuana is in its infancy. Dispensaries aren't open yet, but clinics like this one in Chicago are registering patients. I'd say probably about 25% of the patients we see here probably have cancer. Dr. Jonathan Spiro works at the Healing Clinic in Chicago. It's very clear that for many conditions, it's just it, it shouldn't be just a secondary treatment. It should be a you know, primary treatment. So what I'm going to do... Feliza Castro is the clinic's owner. As a person with lupus, she says she's personally benefited from using cannabis oil. If I can help other patients uh, like myself uh, with different conditions uh, benefit from medical cannabis, then that makes me really happy. Because dispensaries and growers haven't yet opened, Felisa says medical marijuana won't be available in Illinois until later this year. We assume that there will be people uprooting from Indiana and moving to Illinois, um, you know, seeking medical yes. cannabis. And we want to let people know that we're there to help those people. This is Jennifer's first administration of RSO oil. More than 2,000 miles from Indiana, Jennifer Perkins has posted a video to Facebook. It shows her receiving a dose of cannabis oil in Oregon. 
By phone, she told us she's had one seizure, but believes her newfound therapy is working. Now, because of that access delay in Illinois, Feliza Castro says she has told patients they can travel to Michigan where medical marijuana is already available. But to do that, there's a strong chance you'd have to travel through Indiana where it's still illegal. The DEA tells me the agency is not as concerned by this or Hoosiers crowdfunding asking for money in hopes of gaining access to marijuana. Harder drugs like heroin and prescription narcotics remain that agency's top focus. Okay, so Talion has proposed some legislation. Mm -hmm. What happens to that now? Well, the bill died uh, this spring without getting a committee hearing. Mm -hmm. Three other bills that were filed, not by Italian, but by other lawmakers seeking either expansion to medical marijuana or cannabis oil, those all died without getting a hearing as well. So resubmitted, maybe? Well, she's running, for, might... she's running for governor, okay, so her that. platform essentially hasn't been laid out, but it, it will be interesting to see whether or not that becomes part of her campaign. Yeah, interesting to watch. Thank you, Bennett. Sure.